Hey, Chris Calhoun here at beautiful McConnell's Mill State Park. Today's water safety tip will be on throw bags. We're going to talk about why you may want to consider using a throw bag. And one of the things that we want to take a look at is what we call the rescue sequence. So the person that's most able to help themselves immediately when they get into trouble is you. So you need to know how to self-rescue. The second thing that we can do to rescue someone is to do shore-based tactics. One of the tools that you may carry with you if you're a paddler would be possibly a throw bag. Throw bags contain approximately 70 feet of rope, 50 to 70 feet of rope. It floats and I can throw this. So if you think about what I'm doing here, this gives me a 70 foot reach out to my victim. So hold on, we're going to go through all the different tips and tricks for you to be able to use a throw bag. Okay, we're going to look at three different types of throw bags here. I have the larger one, which contains approximately 70 to 75 feet of rope. I have a smaller one here, which contains approximately 50 feet of rope. And I have another one here that's got 50 feet of rope in it, but it actually is one that I wear on my waist. Just so that we know the basic parts, typically we'll have your bag. A lot of times they'll have a mesh component up here that allows for ventilation and water to drain out. Okay. You'll have reinforced webbing along the side and it comes around so it gives it much better strength. Along this webbing you'll have reflective stitching on here and for this smaller bag it actually has reflective tape along the side. Many of us do night ops and so those are some of the things that we want so if we hit it with a flashlight you're able to see it. And this one on the outside of the one side of the webbing it actually has these small little pieces of bungee cord and that's for us to be able to put a Silume light stick in. Down at the bottom here I have a figure eight on a bite. I'm going to show the inside of the bag now. Okay so on the inside of the bag remember I've got this figure eight on a bite at the bottom here and that's designed for us to be able to hook another bag to it or attach a carabiner. I have a foam disc in here which provides some additional flotation and then I have just a simple overhand knot and that keeps this foam disc in place. Right? So that's the anatomy of a throw bag. Which one is best for you? I can't really answer that, but I can tell you about some basics. Um, this one is the one that's probably most common that's out there, but because it's larger, it is a little bit harder to throw a greater distance. So weaker throwers may want to consider the small throw bag here. Also, it depends on the craft that you're in. If you don't have a lot of space, Trying to get this into a whitewater kayak might be a little bit of a challenge. It'll still fit, but this one will fit a little bit better. And again, as a rescue technician on water rescue teams, and also if I'm taking groups of people out and I'm responsible for that group, I wear this one. All right, so those are the different choices that you have. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to open up the bag so that you visually can see that. So the way that I typically have mine stored, there's going to be a buckle here at the top. Okay, I have that going through the loop. I push and open up the buckle. There's a toggle here that holds the throat of the bag closed. So I squeeze that toggle and I pull it to the top of the rope. I want to open up the whole throat of the bag because when I throw, I want the rope to deploy out easily and not be constricted. There's going to be a loop here. At the most, you'll stick your thumb through and wrap your hand around once. You will never ever put your hand in here because if you do and you're pulled into the water, you're now attached to the system. You want to be able to easily get out of this. So you either hold it like this or again, thumb through, wrap your hand around once. The hand that holds this part of the rope is going to be your non-throwing hand. Your throwing hand is what you're going to use to deploy the bag. To throw the bag, I want to make sure that I grasp the whole throat of the bag. And we'll see here in a second. You can throw this bag underhand, overhand, or sidearm. I'm going to show you how to stuff the bag if you deployed it. So we're going to say that I have thrown the bag out and I've brought all the rope back in. And so now what I want to do is I want to stuff the bag. 
With my non-throwing hand, I'm going to grasp the rope and I'm going to hold on to the bag. With my throwing hand, I want to push the rope down into this bag. I never ever want to take fistfuls of this rope and stuff it down in here. If I do that, what will happen is that the rope will not deploy correctly. So I'm pushing the rope into the bag. And with practice, you can do this very fast. I want to put the knot into the bag. Then I'm going to take this and slide it down. Then with the toggle, I'll squeeze the toggle, taking it down. And finally, I'll finish up by clipping it together with the buckle. We want to know how to throw the bag, and there's three different techniques. There's an underhand, you want to hold the bag in your hand just like a softball, so it's going to come in here like this, and it's going to be an underhand throw, and when you're throwing at individuals, you want to throw and point directly at them. If your hand goes to the side, the rope's going to go to the side. If I release too early, the rope is not going to deploy and it's going to hit the ground. If I release too late, rope is going to go straight up into the sky. So the object of the game here is a nice underhand throw. So we can do underhand, overhand, and then sidearm. So let's take a look at how that works. I throw with my right hand. I've wrapped my hand around once. Remember we never ever want to stick our hand through the sloop. I always want to be able to get out of it. So the underhand throw, I'm going to yell for the individual, rope, rope, rope. Overhand throw, what I'm going to do is I'm going to release at my ear. So rope, and I want to be pointing at my victim so it deploys in that straight line. To the sidearm, I'm going like this, and it's a release. Okay. Why would I use a sidearm, an overhand or an underhand? I might use an overhand if I've got a bunch of trees and I can't get a nice arc with the throw bag, so I might use an overhand. Underhand is normally the most comfortable for people to throw. And a sidearm, I might use that from a boat, but if I'm throwing from a boat, I only take a little rope out of the bag and I just toss to an individual. Okay, so the last technique I'm going to show you is if you missed the victim and you need to make a rapid throw. What you're going to do is when you pull the rope in, I want to butterfly coil this in my throwing hand. So I'm going to take a bite of rope half on one side, half on another. And what I want to do is I just need to get enough rope in my hand to be able to make that immediate throw to the distance that that victim is. So again, this is a butterfly coil. I'm going to talk about the dangers of a circle coil here in a little bit. I hold on with my non-throwing hand. I'm going to make the throw, get the victim's attention. Rope! and it's going to go out. One of the things I like to try and do is do some practice before I actually hit the water. So I'm going to work with my daughter Jessica here and we're going to practice. She needs to figure out what her max throw is. So we're going to do some underhand throws. So I'm going to toss rope. Nice. Okay, so we're going to just find out where our throws are. In real life, I always want to make sure that I'm throwing past the victim. So you do this before you actually hit the water. Now we're gonna work a little bit on our overhands. Remember, you wanna release at your ear. One more. So that's just some basic things that you can do to practice without ever deploying the rope. Okay, we're gonna talk about some of the things to consider before you deploy your bag. Hopefully you've had the opportunity to set up and where I just chose to set up here is at a vantage point below a rapid where if I'm with a group of people and they capsize they would probably pop up below the rapid and they'd be floating down through here. So I want to think about my throw, my position, and when I pendulum these individuals, which means I'm going to swing them into the shoreline, what am I penduling them into? Ultimately I want to try and drop them into a nice calm eddy along the way and I'm not going to pendulum them into a hazard such as a strainer or an undercut rock. When we deploy this bag, I want to throw the bag when the victim is directly in front of me. And when I throw the bag, I want to be throwing past the victim. Right? 
So when they're coming down, I'm going to be yelling, rope, rope, rope. And then I'm going to throw the bag to the victim. Once it's thrown to the victim, I want to get into what's called a belay position. And with the belay position, I want to have the rope on the downstream side of me. So I'm controlling up here. I like to have that rope down here on my leg. I've got a good stance and I'm here in this position here. And what this allows me to do, it allows me to open up the gate. So you think about this, I'm a gate, I open the gate up. So as the person's coming down, I can twist with them and I can drop them into the eddy. If I have this opposite, where the main part of the rope is on the upstream side of me, as there's tension on the system, it's going to twist me around and it could cause me either to fall into the water or to lose my balance. Last thing I want to talk about before we have Jessica get in the water here is the difference between a static and a dynamic belay. A static belay is when you've thrown the rope, the victim's got it, and the current's not too swift, you're able to just kind of hang on and you're able to swing them into the eddy. On the other hand, if you're in a situation where the current is just really cooking and you've thrown the rope to them, and all of a sudden you realize you can't hold on, you can maybe immediately drop down onto the ground, embrace yourself, or you can do what's called a dynamic belay. And what a dynamic belay is, is I'm going to move down along the shoreline with the victim and hopefully continue to bring him in or her in to where it's easier for me to hold on. Okay, before Jessica gets into the water, I want to go over just a couple of things regarding what she needs to do when the rope comes to her. When I throw this bag, it shouldn't hit her, it should go over top of her. So it's gone past her. What I want her to do is to hold on to the rope on the opposite shoulder of the shore that she's going to be coming to. So for me, I've gotten into a belay position like this. I'm telling her to hang on and I'm going to swing her into the shoreline. So I want to talk just about a couple of hazards and things that I don't want you to do. Never, ever wrap yourself up in this rope. If the rescuer loses the rope, you're now going downstream with 70 feet of rope. If that attaches to some type of object, you're going to immediately stop and you're going to go down under the water. One of the things I carry on my life jacket is a knife. That knife is for me, if necessary, to have immediate access to cut somebody out of a rope if I need to. So never ever wrap your hands up in the rope. Second thing I want you to be aware of is that when you're swimming, there can be some rope down here around your legs. Just be cautious of where that rope is at all times. All right, you don't want it to wrap around your legs. It should be floating on the surface. But if you have a butterfly coil come to you, you might have a bunch of it down here. So be cautious about that. And finally, last thing that I want to talk about is a circle coil. I don't teach circle coils anymore because I think they're extremely dangerous, and here's why. We learned how to do the butterfly coil, but some people still use a circle coil. And you can see it forms a continuous loop here. When I throw this at the victim, especially if they're close, as it goes out, it can potentially go over top of their head and now, I've got a really bad situation. So, do not throw circle coils. Use a butterfly coil, they're more likely to deploy evenly. As a rescuer, I always watch where that rope lands. And if I see it land on top of the victim, I'm yelling them to clear it. And hopefully they know how to do that. So, it's a tool that we can use, but there are some risks and hazards to using it. My throw point is going to be right here. I'm going to throw right past her. I get her attention. Rope, rope, rope. Again, she's right in front. The bag goes past her. I want it on her shoulder. I'm in a belay position. And what I have right in this area here is a really nice eddy. And again, we talk about capture points. And I'm going to bring her right into this nice calm eddy here. So Jessica is again floating downstream. Remember she has a whistle on her life jacket so she could have blown the whistle to get my attention. Rope, rope, rope! 
and you can see how nice that pays out. She's got it over her shoulder. Because the water's nice and calm here, I can just do a simple hand over hand to bring her in. Nice job, Jessica. We've covered a ton of material today on the throw bed. Hopefully you've learned the anatomy, different throwing techniques, some of the things that you need to take into consideration when the rope is thrown, and the risks and hazards associated with the use of a throw bag. On that note, from Chris and Jessica, we hope you have a great day, and be safe out there on the water.